All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today I'm going to take a look at in-ear monitors. I've got a wide assortment here of um, professional and low-grade in-ear monitors, ranging from $38 up to $2,000. Let's get into it. I've got a setup here that um, I have two microphone measurement um, units from Audix TM2s and I can send pink noise, I can send a pulse, um, and I can send music. We can look at them on smart and look at the spectrum analysis of them as well as we'll be able to look at the transfer function and the phase response and you'll be able to hear the actual in-ears themselves and um, the sonic differences between them. So as my reference set, I'm gonna use the, to start with, I'm gonna use the Ultimate Ear uh, UE18 Plus. They're armatures, it's, uh, um, these are molded ears. Now a lot of these will be molded, some of them will be generics that you know you can fit in anybody's ear. The rest of them are ear impression where they're molded to my ear and um, stuff I've acquired for different, um, bands I've worked for or as bands have gone through different ears over the years and um, so let's take a look. These, got, these ones have a two pin uh, connector on them. Uh, it's got a little housing around it to protect it from bending. The, a lot of the older ones didn't have that housing so uh, if you yanked on the ear, guitar got caught, it would tear that little um, those pins out, so that acts a little more, um, adds a little more strength, but then that puts that pressure on your ear. Uh, the cable here is a four wire cable, uh, four wires splitting into two sets of two. You'll notice on a lot of the high end ears, they've got um, braided cables rather than like a solid, um, a rigid cable. And um, you know, it's, it's interesting, they do that for several reasons. One is to add flexibility. And the other is to reduce some of the noise that transfers from the cable rubbing against your uh, body or your clothes up into the ears, because vibration on a sealed ear kind of transmit a low end, uh, low end rumble into there, and you can actually hear it. Um, all the in ears will have a little slider on them. It's actually under the tape on this one, and a little slider so that when you put the ears in, you can slide that up to the back of your head if you wear them behind, which most people do, or you slide it up to your chin, and um, it kind of pins the ears down and holds them in place. And also that's really helpful in minimizing the amount of sound transferred from the lower end of the cable up to your ears. It'll stop at that um, junction point. Um, and yeah, it can be a little annoying, especially with quieter ears and stuff where you can, every time you move, you hear a little rustling sound. And I've got these Audix TM2 um, microphone test units for in-ears and um, I've got a rubber band to hold this thing in and line it up and there we go I've got um, I'm gonna call up on here the UE pink which is my reference there it is um, so we're running a little hotter uh, I've taken reference curves just to make sure I get it into the jigs correctly and uh, we're not looking at something that's off because I spent some time, you know, lining everything up and getting nice um, uh, even readings here. So I'm going to go ahead and recapture that as the new one. Mm, and the gain is up just a hair from where it was before, but we look good. Um, all right, so there's our response. As you can see, it's um, fairly flat from um, all the way down at 20 hertz up to about 613 is a little dip and um, up to about 1.5k and then it a little rise and then it kind of tapers off as most of these will in the high frequencies all right let's go to the transfer function and the transfer function i can turn that on here and we should see something and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna find the delay time so the delay time um, is the latency so what it takes some time for the sound to radiate from the driver to be reproduced. There's some lag in the driver, very small, but enough to be measured. 
and then it travels down whatever tubes to combine the multiple armatures or whatever, and then it travels down to the microphone through the air and the speed of sound. And so there's some latency. There's some uh, tiniest bit of time offset. And in order to get a proper phase response, we need to get that time set. So this one's reading 0.35 milliseconds is the latency settings or the offset that's set there for time. And we can see that our frequency response looks very similar to what we saw, which should be normal. The transfer function is basically a measurement. For the transfer function measurement, um, I'm sending the signal be from this console, this little console here, to SMART, and it is using that as a reference, and I'm also sending the signal from the measurement mic to SMART, and it compares the two, and it basically says that this is the difference between what is sent and what is output, um, which is different from the uh, frequency response curve because that just looks at the output. So the transfer function, if you send something that's not flat and what comes out is not flat, the transfer function just says, well, if, if what was sent is received, then it is flat. It's putting out, it's doing what we told it to do. So we don't necessarily need a flat signal for it. Um, all right, so let's look at the uh, the phase. The phase response starts off at um, oh, 42 degrees up and it's slowly, it's very, very smooth all the way up to 3.3K um, and then uh, we can see it advancing in phase. So if we subtract some time, we can see probably what's happening here is there's a polarity reverse during the summation. I don't know. There's something going on in the crossover in there. Um, there's probably a little crossover in there. And um, we're seeing the phase shift through the crossover region, and the crossover is probably right around 5K. Um, cool. Flat phase response, frequency response relatively flat. And surprisingly, a lot of in-ears are not flat, and I don't think they're intentionally even trying to be flat. Uh, it seems like there's uh, two trains of thought within here. Some, like, we'll try and get this as flat as possible. Some of them are like, we're going to put some peaks in the high mid, some intelligibility peaks. Um, maybe it came from the um, hearing aid world. Um, I do know that if you plug it in here into an iPod or your cell phone, and it's got those presence peaks, it sure sounds like there's presence peaks in there, and it makes the music a little bit uh, less challenging, less enjoyable for me. Um, but for using them on stage, um, yeah, there's different trains of thought there. Okay, so these are the UEs, and uh, let's go ahead and listen to some music. So for that, I'm going to put my headphones on. Uh, we'll bring this song up. Thank you, J.T. O'Neill, for giving me this um, music that I can play without getting uh, copyright stung on YouTube. Um, and right now, we are listening to the sound of the music coming out of the board, going into the UE 18+, and then into the measurement mic and out of the measurement mic into the recorder and into these headphones. And I'm listening right from the recorder and you should, you are too. And you can hear it if I touch it. There's a boom, boom. Okay. Now I'm going to press this and it'll switch us to the original signal. As you can hear, there's a pretty drastic difference. You probably do want headphones for this video. I should have said that sooner. Um, but you can, I'm sure you hear that on the phone. But some of these um, later ones we get into are going to be more subtle differences. Um, pretty drastic difference on the top end. Uh, it's Now, we are coming out of a speaker into a mic and then listening to it versus coming straight out. But in a perfect world, if everything was flat, they should sound the same. Um, all right. I'm going to take the UE and I'm going to move it over to the other um, measurement and we'll use it as a reference. So now as we go into other ones, 
um, we can um, compare. And then what I'll do is if I find some other ones that, uh, we'll try and find the one that sounds the closest to the music. How's that? All right, so uh, let's get another set of ears. So let's go, let's go on the lower end of scale. Let's try something that, um, let's do these Sennheiser. Um, these are IE4s at the monstrous price of $69. Um, though they do kind of look like the headphones that come with your cell phone kind of thing. And it's got kind of a rubbery cable that um, isn't, is, uh, it's not braided, it's, it's kind of sticky, which uh, may or probably, it seems more catchy um, and tangly than um, the higher end cables. But let's go ahead, and these are not molded, this is a generic set. So let's go ahead and look at the difference between this and the UEs, the $1,500. So $1,500 versus 80 bucks. So now uh, what we're seeing here is we've got some extra low end coming out of it, and then it starts to cross over and roll off in the 250 region. There's kind of the smiley face uh, low, uh, upper mids or mids. And then we've got this double peak. I'm going to see more of those. And this one's at 3.6 and around 6.13, about 6K, 3 and 6K, and then it rolls off. So let's go ahead and look at music or listen to music. So. Um, that kind of you can hear that right like, sound in there um, that's common in a lot of in ears and uh, you know it, it has you can hear the hollowed out mid um, and you know that's a low cost in ear compared to a very high cost in ear. Cool. Let's move on to something else. First, we'll take out this um, Sennheisers. How about we do a hmm. I don't want to grab the Shures. Yeah, here we go. Here's another um, common in-ear, these uh, Shure um, SE215. Okay, so um, got the Shure in there, and uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to update this curve. It's a little bit hotter. All right, there's a transfer function. It looks fairly flat, bounces around a little bit. It doesn't have the, um, I can call up the um, U Ultimate Ears here and um, show you there's phase response. So they're similar in the low end. The Shure's actually got a flatter response, but it's a single driver unit with no crossover. So we don't have that phase offset there. And again, we're seeing this double peak. This one's at 2.45 and 4.96K. Um, so let's go ahead and put this on spectrum. And there's our two peaks and it bellies out in the low. So it's got that smiley face again, taking the mid range out and adding the double the double upper peak and then there's a little peak up there let's go ahead and listen to it so bring it up to music there we have the shore so this will be the shore on this side and the ue over here
Um, it's definitely brighter in there. It's kind of, you can hear those high-end um, uh, whistles there. The UE is definitely darker sounding. Um, you know, some of that can be EQ'd in. Uh, I'm not going to get into EQing here because um, that just opens a can of worms of variables. Let's um, listen to some future Sonics. Okay, so now these are MG6 Pro. It's an older Future Sonics, and it's uh, um, about that one thousand twenty-five dollars. And this is a different type of driver. This is a thirteen millimeter uh, voice coil driver, so it's around uh, like a little speaker instead of an armature. All right, so now uh, let's see what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and look at the transfer function and time this thing up. Insert it, and it comes up a little bit. Okay, so the phase response looks pretty flat um, and bounces around a bit and then um, sweeps up in the high end there. Let's, oh, and again, on this one, we're seeing a peak at um, 1.73, 3.45K, and another peak up in the 6.8 or 7K, and another one at 11.55. Let's see what that sounds like. And again, we're, we're dipping down. So we're actually seeing this very similar um, response. All right, let's um, listen to some music. So there's the Future Sonics, single 13 millimeter driver. It's got a vent in the back, it opens. It's got some more ambience to it too because it, um, it has a port that opens up into the real world uh, versus being totally sealed. All right, so that wraps up part one. Um, I'm going to continue with part two and we'll test some more.